Ah, she's parking her cub, telling him to stay behind while she hunts. Better listen, Poby. Poby? Yeah, Poby. Polar bear, Poby. They don't see me. My iceberg disguise is working. Somebody pinch me. Ow! I didn't mean literally. Well, it looks like the brainless brothers have a dancing bear. <laughs> Not for long. Look at that. She blends right into the ice and snow. With that arctic camouflage, the walrus don't even see her. Oh, it just gets better. Oh, the more dancing varmints, the merrier. Oh, the crowd's gonna love it. And I, Zach Varmatech, will be so rich, it'll make your head spin. Hey, I didn't mean literally. Now, go catch those poppies. Whoa, she's attacking. The walrus can hardly move up here. They're like big blubbery caterpillars. Made it! Barely! The bear is in control on land, and the walrus rules the water. Two natural enemies. But what would happen if one caught the other on its own turf? <laughs> well, say bye bye to your mommies. <laughs> A sack attack. He snatched them right from under our noses. You don't steal baby animals from their moms. What's he gonna do to them? Goodbye. Never gonna see you again. Zack's nastier than an Arctic blizzard. How are we supposed to catch that turbo boosted speedboat? Aha! Uh -huh. By moving the way the creatures move. Yes, running like a polar bear. Swimming like a walrus. We've got to activate our uh, creature power suits. That's one way to do it. Sweet walrus power. What a rip. How am I supposed to touch a bear who wants to eat me? Your problem, not mine, bro. Gotta go. Hang on, bear. Hop on my way. Okay, it's a double cub napping. This will put our inventions to the test. Keep your eyes on those animals and get ready to invent. This is Walrus World. Guys, I could use a little help figuring out how to move down here. Whoa. Uh, uh, uh. Now I get it. Power comes from the back flippers. The back flipper action propels the walrus. Whoa! Oh, note to self, learn to steer. Ugh. Now that's a huge whale. Uh, no, that's a huge whale. Mother sperm whale and her calf. Is that big enough inspiration for you, Aviva? Might be. It might be. Whale powers. Let's see, a sperm whale can dive deeper than any other whale. She has flexible ribs that can fold up under intense pressure. And she has a thick layer of fat to keep her warm in the cold, deep waters. I can learn a lot from these whales. This is gonna be the best creature power suit yet. Whoa, what was that? It's coming from the big mama sperm whale's head. Okay, it's true. Sperm whales are the loudest animal in the world. They're echolocating on us. Yeah, that booming sound comes out of her big bumpy head. Bounces off us, the sound waves travel back to her lower jaw, which takes the sound up to her ear. Then to her brain. That's what you call sonar. And the sperm whale gets a sound picture of us. Or her lunch. Whoa, she gulped down hundreds in one mouthful. That's like a bathtub full of squid in one bite. And she can eat eight bathtubs full of slimy squid a day. Look how closely the calf follows his mom. He's cute.
cute. I'd say looks about a year old. I'd say looks like a little rascal. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to come up with a funny, playful little name for this guy. Hmm. Can't be too little of a name. He's already as big as a minivan, following a mom who's as big as a school bus. They're heading towards you, Tortuga. Wow, the sperm whale is the largest tooth predator that ever lived on planet Earth. There she blows. <laughs> Sperm whales rule the sea or what? Almost, but not quite. They can get ganged up on by pods of hunting killer whales. Drifting fishing nets called ghost nets tangle them up. And then there are the stories of epic battles with giant squid. But no one's ever seen it because they meet in the deep. What's going on up there? The whales are each taking a big breath in through their blowhole. A whale breath is the same amount of air that fills a car. They must be getting ready for a deep dive. Yeah, going deeper looking for bigger squid. Oh, <laughs> hey, we're not a beach ball or a bumper boat. Bumper, that's it, you're Bumper, the newest member of the Wildcrats team. Here we go. Nobody's ever followed hunting sperm whales into the depths. We're with you, Bumper. Okay, Aviva, how deep can this sub go? Deeper than any mobile sub ever created by humans. I hope. Losing, I see tracks. They slid down the hill. Let's go. We'll be right back with those rabbits. There's the cage. Break. <laughs> <sighs> Uh-oh. <gasps> It's okay! Oh, or not. Well, that sled was good while it lasted. At least we found the hispids. Hey guys, sorry about the mix-up. Yeah, we didn't mean to leave you behind, we... Martin, it's empty! What? <gasps> the cage wasn't locked! Oh. Tortuga HQ, come in! Chris, please tell us you found the hairs. The cage wasn't locked. The rabbits are gone. Uh, I think that's my fault. Things aren't really going our way today, are they? <gasps> Look! They went this way. Don't worry, we're still on their trail. Quick, let's go. Look, you can tell they're struggling out here in the deep snow. Oh, they're sinking down in the snow just as badly as we are. Uh. Whoa, now that's a creature built to handle the winter. A snowshoe hare. Amazing. He just walks right on top of the snow. He's a snow walker. Look at those huge feet. That's what keeps him from sinking in. Oh no, the fresh snow is burying the hispid tracks. Come on. We gotta hurry or we'll never find those hispids. Hispids! Hispids, where are you? Hispids, where are you? Hispids, are you out there? Do you see the tracks? I can't see anything except white. If we're having this much trouble in the deep stuff, imagine the little hispids. Hey, buddy. Wow, if we could get around like that, it'd be so much easier to find those hairs. Even though he's a different kind, he'll help us figure out where his cousin, the hispid hair, might go. I've got the miniaturizer. Hey, let's see if he'll give us a ride. Miniaturize. Hey, where'd he go? He disappeared. Here, Snowshoe Hare! Where are you? Oh, we keep losing hairs today. Whoa! Avalanche! There you are! Oh, that was a pretty good tumble you gave me. So I'll give you a good name. Avalanche! Hey, do you think you could help us out? We're looking for three lost hairs, and we need a ride. Whoa, these big feet sure would help. The way they spread out your weight, so you don't sink in the snow. 
<laughs> if people had feet like this, our feet would be about 10 times bigger than they are. Ah! Not only that, they're covered with fur even on the bottom. That makes their feet even bigger, keeps them warm in the snow, and gives them traction when they're running. So thanks for the ride, Avalanche. Just go where hares go, and we just might be able to track down the hispids. We're hare back riding! Yeehaw! Now that you're out of that sticky situation, guys, time to get back to the walruses. I'm ready to do some inventing. Weird looking walrus, here we come! Wow, it's the famous Arctic Pearl. I hear it's worth a zillion dollars. That's the biggest pearl I've ever seen. Danita Donata. It's Zach Varmatek. Uh, we met at the Finding Your Inner Villain in 30 Days seminar. Yes, yes, aren't you the one who ate too many clams and then was sick under the table all night? No, I'm the world-renowned mega-genius robotics inventor. Now, I know you use live animals for your clothing line, and I just found a pearl I thought you might like. Like it? I love it! It'll be the crowning jewel for my new line of pearl-encrusted sweatpants. Can you get more? Well, if my calculations are correct, there's a huge untapped source of pearls under the Bering Sea, which will cost us nothing and make me, I mean us, millions. So, can you meet with me today? Maybe. Will you give me that big pearl to seal the deal? If I have to. You do? I'll be there as soon as I find my snakeskin belt. I think it's slithered under the couch. Ciao! Oh, I'm gonna be rich. Wait, I'm already rich. Oh, I'm gonna be really rich! <laughs> okay, I think we're onto something in the weird-looking walrus mystery. Whoa, that's one way to use those weird-looking tusks. Like sled runners to slide across the mucky ocean floor. Then the walrus shoots water into the sediment to break it up. She's looking for something in the mud. Hey, so is Blobby. Whoa, look at those whiskers go. Hey Blobby, have your whiskers grown in yet? Whiskers, they have 450 of them, give or take a couple. Whoa, their whiskers work like magic fingers in the mud. <laughs> you can't find things with nose hairs. <laughs> My controller! Chill, Jimmy. I made it waterproof. Pudding proof, too. See? Just like fingers, each whisker has muscles to move it. So, now we know that walruses use tusks and whiskers to search for something in the muck. But what is it? I know. I'll make a creature attachment for the creature power suits. And maybe you guys can dig in and find out. Hey, waste not, want not. Stop this thing! I can't! The flight module malfunctioned! That's because it's gone! We're heading for a crash landing! Deploy emergency parachute! Oh! Oh, too late. Well, at least we landed in soft snow. Freezing cold, but soft. <laughs> yeah, but I think Jimmy just swallowed the flight module. Ah, we're grounded! Good thing Aviva added ground gear. <laughs> Great! Then let's get back to the Tortuga. They'll be waiting for... <gasps> a meadow vole! Kinda like a mouse, but different. Shorter tail. A little like a mole, but different. Small paws. 100% vole! And pretty roly-poly. Hey, I'll call you Rojo. But what are you doing out and about? It's super cold out. Way below freezing. You should be hibernating or something. Yeah, sleeping through the winter, like groundhogs and bats and hedgehogs. Winter's harsh. Freezing temperatures, food scarce, no leaves, no berries. A little guy like you could die out here. Rolo? Wait, hold up. Are you okay? We can't let anything happen to that little vole. Let's go.
Oh, it shouldn't take them this long. You know those Krat brothers? Always getting uh. caught up in something. Speaking of caught, I got something caught in my teeth. Anyway, I'm not waiting around for them out there. I never was a big fan of winter. In fact, if I were an animal, I'd be a bird and fly south to warm weather during the winter time. Not me. I'd be a black bear and sleep through the winter, slow down the old heartbeat and body temp, and hibernate. <sighs> no way. I love the snow. I'd stay active. I'd be a lynx, put on a warm coat and snowshoes, and get out there. Ah, south for the winter. That'd be a good way to spend my vacation. A nice, warm beach. Hibernate on a beach? I have no problem with that. If I could just get this thing out of my teeth. Isn't anybody just a little worried about what happened to those guys? Maybe she's got brain freeze and isn't thinking straight. Well, if she doesn't get somewhere warm fast, her whole body will freeze. What? Oh no, that's ice cold snow and she walked right into it. We gotta get her out of here. But go down in that snow, are you kidding me? Our rocket jet could get stuck under all that snow. So could Rolo. We gotta go. Rolo, buddy, we're coming. Ah! Ah! Okay, the suits will be carried by the currents, which are moving northeast. Let's head northeast, Aviva. You got it, Chris. See the suits, Martin? Oh, I don't see any sign of them. Oh, I'm so sorry, Aviva. I'll forgive you, Ace Manta Rider, when you find my creature power suits. Hey, it looks like we have a giant Pacific octopus coming our way. Oh yeah, I see him too. Hey, I think it's seven. Four, five, six, seven. Eight, not seven. But talk about a creature with amazing creature powers. Giant Pacifics are like a team of superheroes all rolled into one. They have escape tactics. Amazing stretching abilities. And they're super smart. But does he have the power to find my suits? I'll ask him. Hey, guy, what's up? Whoa! He's thinking, I'm out of here, using jet propulsion. Hey, he must be trying to escape from a predator. I'm a big fan of jet propulsion. How does an octopus use it? OK, water goes up into his head and then into a tube. The tube has muscles at the top of it, which quickly squeezes water out the hole in the back. And that shoots the octopus forward at about 40 kilometers per hour. It's like having a jet engine right in your head. Super cool. Chris, take over driving. I'm gonna add jet propulsion into the octopod movement system. If I fasten this tubing into the intake valve over here, it'll run water into the auto pump. That'll squeeze it through this tube. It just might work. If anyone can do it, you can, Aviva. You were right, Chris. He was escaping the predator. That great white shark! Whoa! The Octo just said, eat this, and shot a cloud of ink into the great white's face to mask his escape. He didn't only take off to escape. His ink has chemicals that are poisonous, even to him. Oh, it did a super job of irritating the shark's eyes so the octopus could get away. Oh, add an ink defense to the octopod, Aviva. Oh yeah, we need an ink defense. How's that gonna help us find the suits? The octopus has it for a reason, so the octopod should too. It worked great for him because the shark is gone. I spoke too soon. 
The shark must think we're an octopus. He's chewing on us! Oh no! Ugh. He might bite through the power line. Then we're going down with no way up. No better time to test my jet propulsion feature than now. 